uh, propulsion system maintenance and happy operating room is going to be presented to you by Rich Marriage from AME Solutions. Everybody here probably knows Rich. Um, anybody who's attended one of our engineering seminars in the past would know Rich from the presentations that he's made. Uh, Rich comes from a long line of engineers. How long that line is, I don't know, but he's in the front of it right now, fortunately. Grew up on the water, hence his lifelong passion for ocean and fixing things. He attended the State University of New York, SUNY as it's known, their maritime college, earning a bachelor degree in marine engineering, continuing his education in systems and ocean engineering at Virginia Polytech and George Washington Universities. In 1992, a long time ago, Rich, founded Advanced, Me uh, Mechanical, excuse me, Advanced Maintenance Engineering and later in 2002, Advanced Mechanical Enterprises. Um, Servicing, servicing the maritime and industrial sectors. He furthered his specialized training, earning a Coast Guard uh, captain's license as a second engine, no, excuse me, a Coast Guard license as a second assistant engineer, steam and motor, unlimited horsepower, and a certification as vibration analyst. Guided by his knowledge and expertise, AME is recognized as an external specialist for condition monitoring by the American Bureau of Shipping, Marriage is sought the world over as a speaker, an instructor, an expert witness for his over 35 years of knowledge and expertise in vibration analysis. Before starting his own companies, Rich worked uh, for such prominent organizations as American Transport Lines, Westinghouse, David Taylor Naval Research Center, the Booz Allen, and Hamilton as an engineer. His career saw him traveling throughout the United States and abroad, conducting sea trials, performing major equipment overhauls and installations. Today known as AME Solutions, uh, one of the generous sponsors that helped us start this at Yacht Engineering Seminar, bringing rich marriage. Come on up. It's like Ellen DeGeneres here. <laughs> right. Um, good morning, everybody. Thank you for having me um, here. And, um, this uh, topic is really, uh, I was thinking about a happy engine room, really, a happy engine room. Um, reminds me when I was shipping out on uh, merchant ships and uh, we used to joke around, we called the engine room the mechanical garden, you know, going down in 110 degrees off the coast of Brazil or something. Anyway, here we are. So, uh, start it off. Um, Paul did a great job introducing me, thank you. And um, been in business uh, 25 years uh, in May. I can't, it's hard to believe. And uh, we've had all kinds of interesting case histories. That's our, uh, that's our office, that's our machine shop at Lauderdale Marine Center and some of our uh, service staff. Um, and propulsion system maintenance, a happy operating room. Um, yachts today are, um, they have this many different types of uh, propulsion systems and um, and to have a happy operating room I would assume you know you want to have a good understanding of the components and uh, the maintenance required and I'm going to try to touch today on some things that you know we've learned over the years that um, there's no way I could cover every possible aspect of maintenance in, in an engine room so what, we're, what I'm here today is to try to tell you guys what, what things we have seen over the years that are, uh, have been red flags and, and ruined a lot of charters and, and given a, a lot of brokers fits when they're trying to make a sale. And that's what we're uh, trying to prevent here. So um, yacht propulsion arrangements, you have uh, this, a standard arrangement, normal on, on most boats is a straight shaft system. Um, you know, you've got the, the gearbox and, the, and everything in a straight shaft. You've got a V drive. Um, I'm going to focus on those two, the straight shaft and the V drive today. There's also a jet drive propulsion. There's surface drives and, and uh, pod drives. And there, there's probably even, you know, then you have oil bath systems and everything else. So there's, there's all kinds of different arrangements out there. But for the purposes of today, I'm going to focus on straight shafts and V drives. So uh, a straight shaft system is, you know, you have a straight, so you have the engine connected to a gearbox, could be close coupled or, or remote. And um, the benefits of that is uh, it's, it's a very simple, easy to maintain type of uh, drive line. 
Um, the motor is, uh, the engine is placed in a good point on the vessel, so you have it uh, on the center of gravity, and it, it helps to stabilize the boat. Um, and uh, and it's, uh, again, very simple, easy to maintain. Uh, drawbacks to this system is it takes up a lot of space, and um, you know everybody wants cabin space. So there we go. There's a, a little graphic uh, shows what a straight, you know, a, a typical straight system is, and um, you could have this arrangement either close coupled. This is showing a close coupled arrangement. Um, a remote mounted system. This the gearbox would be separated from the engine and. That would allow you to make the engine even more soft mounted and um, give you uh, better vibration isolation. But this system is simple, it works, and it's the most popular one out there. This is a close coupled arrangement with a down angle gear, which is probably the most prevalent system. So your gear has uh, got a down angle here and allows you to keep the engine sitting level. And the weight distribution on the mounts is usually 40% on the front of the engine and 60% on the back. All right, so one of the things that, I'm, I'm, so we're talking about propulsion maintenance here and you know the, the engine mounts by far are, are the area that we see the most problems. There's a, there's a lot of they, they seem like very simple devices, but they're often taking this type of arrangement. They're taking thrust force and they're taking torque. And when we see, I would say more than half of the vibration problems we see are due to um, engine mount installation problems, engine mount pour in, uh, selection problems, or um, not, you know, just, just uh, or deterioration from age. And the other, the other piece of equipment that is always overlooked is the, uh, the vibration torsional coupling, which is the coupling between the engine and the gear. And these are usually made, and they're usually uh, a silicon rubber or a Buna rubber, and they have a 10 year service life. And um, if they're not selected properly, or they're not looked after, and um, if you get a tor or if the calculation wasn't done, there's a torsional vibration calculation um, that has to be tuned to all the rotating masses, the crankshaft, the propeller, uh, all the gearbox weights, and if that's not properly, um, if that's not properly engineered, you'll have this uh, horrendous uh, torsional vibration which can tear up equipment. And uh, of course, we have the cutlass bearings. Uh, one of the things that caught my ear on the, on the previous presentation uh, by Dometic was the issue of marine growth. Well, you know, one of the worst things for the, the, a boat is to sit at the dock, and uh, you get marine growth in the, um, in the cutlass bearings and your stern tube, and um, you can grow a farm in there. And it is the worst thing for the bearings. It'll, it'll you know, I had a guy call me last week and he was complaining, well, the bearings only lasted two and a half years. Well, the boat sits at the dock and it's, he's got all this marine growth in the, in the shaft uh, between the, in the, in the water channels on the, on the bearings. And when he starts it up, it acts like a grinder. So um, I really uh, couldn't advocate enough that you've got to turn those shafts periodically. Don't, don't let the boat just sit there. Somebody's got to do something, go down the boat and turn on the engines and rotate the shafts or do it by hand, whatever you got to do, because you got to get that, you can't let that marine growth build up on it. And the other issue is the crevice corrosion. Crevice corrosion is, uh, is uh, quite serious if, uh, if, if the water just lays in there, particularly on, the, on a stern tube or something, the, the, just the water laying in there will eat away at the shafts. And then I, I mentioned a few other things here. We got um, keep up your shaft sinks. It's always a good practice to have the shafts grounded. And the keyways on the shaft should be spooned out so they don't have stress risers um, where they can crack on the, on the ends of the shafts. And then the key fits are also very, very important. Um, we've had a lot of vibration issues because of um, couplings riding keyways, propellers riding keyways, and propellers coming loose. 
So uh, these are the little details that need to be uh, paid attention to. Um, shaft seals, again, sitting is like one of the worst things for these things. Um, got to have water flow through them, got to keep them, keep them turning occasionally. Um, I, can't, I can't push, you know, advocate it enough. We've seen um, failures that just seem unnecessary because um, somebody forgot to turn on the water injection line to the uh, shaft seal or it got plugged up. And uh, the boat sits a while, sometimes that can happen. The, 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 uh, the water injection line, if you don't have water going into a shaft seal, yeah, the friction on the shaft and the, will cause that thing to fail in, in 15 minutes. And uh, we just had a case of that last week and it was, it was very unfortunate. So uh, water injection, can't, can't push that enough. Make sure you got water going through. Struts. Struts are, uh, there's, there is a tremendous amount of side load. We did a calculation once on a, on a hundred foot uh, planing, planing hull, semi-displacement um, planing hull. And um, I think it came out there was like almost three tons of uh, radial force on a strut from the propeller turning at, you know, full speed through the water. So, um, you know, we see struts that are bedded in with 5200, and that's like, um, it's a great material, but it's, it should never be used for a bedding compound on a strut because it's elastic, and what will happen is the strut will start, you know, wiggling around down there, and you'll get a horrendous vibration, it can, and it can damage your reduction gear. So, you know, and then the other thing is if the boat's had a grounding or something, you know, God forbid that never happens, we know, but, you know, if, if uh, the boat ever had an uh, impact with the seabed or anything or hit, hit an uh, underwater object, you, you, when the boat gets hauled, you know, take a good look at the strut and look at the backing, the bolts on the uh, backing plates and see if there's any evidence of salt buildup or um, water coming through there because that's, that's a serious uh, problem when we see that uh, more often than not. A lot of power going through there and a lot of high speed and if those struts uh, get, uh, you know, exposed to any impacts, it can, it can loosen them up. All right, so engine mounts. So this is different types of engine mounts that, you know, we, uh, I'm, I've got a bunch of pictures of engine mounts because engine mounts, again, are, are one of the biggest uh, causes of vibration on yachts that we've seen that due to installation issues or, or engineering issues. So uh, this is a conical, they call this a conical type of mount. And uh, that's also, it's another brand. Um, and what these do is they, uh, the, the rubber is inside, is, so you have, you have two cones and you have a rubber piece sandwiched. The rubber is in shear. And the way the mount works is it, it isolate, it's, it's the, the rubber in the mount has a very, very low natural frequency, which is below the, um, the engine vibrations that are created, which are at a higher frequency. So those vibrations hit the mount and they get absorbed as a very, very low frequency vibration. So it takes that energy and it turns it into a much lower vibration and you don't feel it. Now, what happens over time is these things have about a 10 year life. And, you know, so if you got a boat that's 10 years old, please look, you know, the engine mount should probably be changed. They, they, they just don't last that long. So the rubber deteriorates, it's got a 10 year life. So um, engine mounts are, uh, you know, um, an issue. And this is, this is a mount here. This is a cat type, it's a Barry controls mount. That's a Christie Gray mount. This mount takes thrust. So we found that the mounts that take thrust tend to deteriorate a little bit faster. Christie Gray makes a mount and they use steel springs. And the advantage of the steel springs is they have a better, um, they, that the rubber is, is a, you know, they mix it in a big, in batches. The consistency of a steel spring is that um, it, it's always going to be the same vibration frequency no matter what. The steel is a very consistent material. We just did a job recently where the engine mounts were uh, all replaced and the boat all of a sudden had this horrendous vibration 
And all we did was change the engine mounts and, and check the alignment. Everything was beautiful. Well, it turned out that the rubber was, in, was softer than what it was specified in the durometer. And it, was, it brought the machinery into its natural frequency, into a harmonic. So the thing just started shaking out of nowhere. And, and you know, we're standing there and we, you know, we don't, the quality control in the mounts, I guess, wasn't, wasn't up to snuff or it was just slightly below and it, it fell into a natural frequency, a harmonic. Okay, this is some more different types of mounts. This is an ACE mount. This, is, this was one of the first isolation mounts I saw when I first moved down here. These things were uh, made up in New Jersey somewhere, and, and they, um, a lot of sport fishes had them. They're, they're a very robust mount. I mean, it's, uh, it's got um, internal into that box. It's got, some, it's got rubber bushings, and they, they make the rubber bushings of different densities, um, different hardnesses for the, uh, depending on the weight of the machinery and the application. The disadvantage of this thing is you can't inspect it. You have no way of knowing, you know, it, it's the rubber's in compression and not in shear. So rubber in compression doesn't isolate vibration as well as rubber in shear. So um, it's a little stiffer mount. It doesn't isolate the vibration well, but it works. It's, it's kind of a bulletproof mount. Um, you're not going to get the best sound isolation, but it's robust. This is another mount by, made by a company called Isoflex. Um, it uses a, uh, a plastic polyurethane uh, type of material for isolation. Um, it works, again, this is very similar to this mount and it's a very robust mount. Um, I don't see where it, ha it doesn't seem to have the same isolation qualities of rubber, but it's a good robust mount and it holds up pretty well. And then these are uh, rubber type mounts that take thrust and um, you know, they're, they're uh, they can take a lot of thrust, but what I've seen is, you know, that all that energy is absorbed by the rubber and they don't seem to last as long. They're, they're a good quality mount and they do a great job of isolating, but it's, it's a, always a trade-off. If you, if you want the uh, vibration to be knocked down and, and you want a happy, quiet engine room that, you know, you don't want the vibration going into the structure. Um, it's always better if you can have the engine, the gear absorbing the thrust and then having the engine completely free floating. This is a, um, this is the, this is the, this is the ring that accepts the torsional vibration coupling. Um, now again, if you ever have a, if you have a boat where it's, you know, the prop struck something hard or had a grounding, um, a lot of times these are overlooked. Nobody thinks to look at these. And the torsional coupling is like a, it, it absorbs torsional vibration from the engine firing, but it also um, acts like a fuse in the system. And um, if it takes an impact, that takes, that absorbs the shock load. And there's, there's a silicon rubber element, and this is from a vessel that was transiting the uh, intercoastal waterway and hit a railroad tie. And that thing got damaged. It, it's hard to see, but it was distorted, and uh, it, you know it saved the crankshaft. You know that's that's what that's what it does, and it also takes out the torsional vibration by the engine firing. Which are those? Are those cracks in the picture? Uh, I think those are um, oil. Yeah, the oil. It got an oil leak after that because it was running with the distorted coupling. So the shaft seal, the oil seal on the, on the flywheel, you know, was exposed to more vibration and it did get an oil leak on the flywheel seal. So this, the oil seal was changed as well. These are two more examples. Now these are torsional couplings. They're also alignment couplings. So they take up for misalignment. They allow for movement between the engine and gear and they take up for um, vibration, torsional vibration as well. So the rubber elements are taking the rotational vibration and these links here are taking up for misalignment vibration. That's, that's a Senta type coupling. This is uh, made by Vulcan. This is uh, another type of coupling and you can see this, the gearbox is separate from the engine. It's not bolted to the engine. So this is remote mounted gear. And again, the advantage of this type of system is the gear takes all the propeller thrust so you can have the engine completely free floating and it 
you can better isolate the engine vibrations. Um, this is cutlass bearings. I was talking about marine growth, and, and, and I have to say the same thing the gentleman from Dometic said is that the marine growth seems to have gotten worse. And you know, when, when a bearing's just sitting, and, uh, and the shaft's just, just sitting at the dock, somebody's got to remember to turn the shafts occasionally because the marine growth will get in these landings and, and it'll chew up the bearing and you'll have all kinds of problems. It'll actually, it'll actually cut into the shaft material itself. So these are two examples of cutlass bearings. Rubber, these are rubber cutlass bearings. Okay. This bug's gonna. This is a uh, composite bearing. Um, the advantage of these, they have better wear properties. They don't wear down as much. They um, they can take uh, they can take more load, and you can have a little more generous clearance in them, which allows for a little bit more misalignment. The disadvantages are they're they're a harder material, and um, when it when this does fail, if it does this this one in particular, this one did fail actually. If it doesn't get water. This was on the forward end of a stern tube, and it was uh, the water injection wasn't uh, operating. And it, um, when when it melts, it, it it absorbs the particulate in the water, and it acts like a grinder. It's like a lapping stone on the shaft, so the shaft will have to be built up and repaired. This is another composite bearing. Um, this bearing um, doesn't doesn't absorb water. It's a thermal um, epoxy. Um, set bearing, it, it, uh, it will not, it will not um, melt, but what this bearing does is it will wear, it's, sa it's sacrificial, so the bearing will wear before the, before the shaft. Okay. Everything's a trade-off, you know. Rubber bearings are good for noise. They have pretty good wear char characteristics. Composite bearings are have better load, more allowance for misalignment, um, and um, you know, better wear properties, but everything's a trade-off. You know, if the bearing wears, then the shaft doesn't wear. If the, sh if the shaft wears, the bearing isn't wearing, so. All right, the shaft seals. Talking about shaft seals, this is a, this is a Wurzel, a, this is a, what they call a, a, a face seal. Um, and the advantage of a face seal is that the, uh, the seal is independent, it's not touching the shaft. Um, it, it, it's a, a very robust seal. It's used, this is used on commercial ships. Um, the disadvantage is it's a little more complicated. It has carbon silicon rings that actually uh, mate, and there has to be fluid going to this thing, as with all seals, but um, if the water, that blue, that blue line, you, you have to have water, and you've got a little um, rotating uh, flow meter there and you have to make sure, and this is where the, the monitoring control would come in, you definitely would want to monitor this to make sure you have flow going, on a, flow going to your uh, shaft seal, um, particularly on a larger vessel. And this one has a uh, air inflator, so if the seal fails, you can stop the shaft and inflate it and prevent water from uh, in, you know, intruding into the boat. And this is, uh, this is the tide seal, which is very prevalent in the industry, and you see these everywhere. Um, that's a, it's a good seal, and um, Jeff Strong did a good job in, in get bringing that out. It's got, you see the water injection lines as well. It's the blue silicon hose mounts onto the stern tube. And this is a lip-type seal. Disadvantage of a lip seal is um, the lips on the seal right on the shaft and they, they do cause the shaft to groove. So you will get some grooving in the shaft. And you can address that in two ways when you do maintenance. You can either move the, you can either move the seal forward and aft so it's not riding in the grooved areas, or you, can, um, or you can weld, build, and repair the shaft, clad weld it. And that's uh, both practices are done in the industry. This is uh, one of our guys doing an alignment. Um, that's, that's a laser alignment system that we use from a company called Easy Laser. 
It, um, we set up a la when we do alignment, we set up a laser um, on the strut, and then we have a, uh, a receiver that's Bluetooth connected, and we take the uh, alignment readings and all the bearings. Um, this was interesting. It was a, it was a yacht that broke down going through the Panama Canal. The uh, bearings, uh, the bearings seized up, and um, what it turned out to be was the um, the the, the bores that the bearings fitted into, they were press fitted in, but the bores were not perfectly round, they were oval. So when they press fit the bearings in, water leaked in, in between the uh, bearing and the, and, the, and the bearing bore. And they got some corrosion which expanded the, which expanded the bearing and it seized up on the shaft. I mean, it was, it was a, you know, crazy situation, but that's what happens, a steel hull. And this is, um, this is another example of, uh, you know, the type of alignments we do in yachts. It's, this is showing, and, and this is a old technology. It's been around since the 1900s. It's an optical bore scope. Um, it's tried and true. Um, it does depend a little bit more. The laser has a computer. It gives you the results. It gives you a printout. This system um, doesn't do that. It does. It's more dependent on the operator and their experience. And you know, you have to choose what what you do is with the bore scope. You pick a straight line of what you want your alignment to be. You choose two points to make a straight line, and then you align your machinery to that straight line. So this shows the, uh, this is an optical bore scope. This is the guy looking at it. You need pretty good eyesight. The guys always complain they're going blind to one eye. <laughs> okay, this is what I was talking about earlier about crevice corrosion. You can see this was, a, this was a, you know, it's a good quality stainless steel shaft. But it was laying in the bearing for an extended period of time and it, you, you can see where the, uh, where the water was laying in there and it just ate away at the shaft. It's crevice corrosion. And um, you know, it's one thing with metal and, and boats is you can't let the water just lay in there. It, it will cause um, problems and that what the, that's in the journal area. So the problem is when the boat's operating, you know, it, it's not maintaining a water film and lubrication for the bearing and um, it'll, it'll chew up the bearing in, in a no time flat. So it has to be repaired. Typical repair on that would be to clad weld it. And then you have pitting as well, and you can see that's, that's some pretty deep pitting in that shaft, and it, again, just from sitting there at the dock. Um, I wanted to also talk about keyways and prop fits on um, all this stuff. All these little details make everything run smooth and keep everybody happy. Happy engine room, right? So this, ha this should have, so what they do is they lap the propeller or the coupling onto the shaft and what you want to do is make sure you have 85% contact area. So you take Prussian blue and they check the fit and make sure they're getting 85% contact. And you also want to make sure that the key's not riding in other words, it's not making contact with the, other, with the uh, other component, with the hub or the prop. Because if it is, it won't fit on there tight. And if it doesn't fit on there tight, it could come loose and you can lose a prop. Had that happen too. 700 foot of water, prop came off. <laughs> um, there's a, there's, this is what I was talking about earlier with the key. By spooning out the key, that's called spooning the key. What that does is it prevents uh, stress risers from sharp edges in, in material science create stress risers. So by having a spooned out key, it, it dissipates the forces and it doesn't create a, a stress concentration. So if it's, you know, if you can get spooned keyways, that's always, always better. This was, an, this was back about the strut, the whole, this, uh, this uh, boat had, um, some work done. Um, they went on a sea trial and, and uh, it was, you know, they had done alignment, um, straightened the shafts, the props were all tuned in, and the boat went out and it was still shaking like crazy. Um, we suspected that maybe the strut um, 
had come loose and we do what's called a, uh, this is a structural impact test, so we take an accelerometer and we actually hit it with a dead blow hammer and measure the vibration of the strut. And if the vibration of the strut is in harmonic with the running speed of the shaft, so the shaft's turning 600 and the strut's vibrating at 600, they're gonna reinforce each other vibration-wise. And this, this causes, uh, you know, this causes a lot of headaches. And it's like one of those vibrations that I've seen people chase and chase and chase. They didn't know what it was. And uh, sure enough, the strut was in harmonic with the shaft. All right, and I'm gonna touch on V drives. A lot of the components in a V drive are, are uh, similar to a straight shaft. The advantages of a V drive is that you can shorten up your engine room and um, you can have a lot more cabin space. And these V drives are becoming more and more popular. Um, so you have a, and, and they, have, they come in different arrangements. They have down angles, they have straight outputs, they can be closed coupled or they can be remote mounted. Most of the, you know, the smaller boats tend to have smaller yachts uh, go with the, um, with the close coupled arrangement. As you get into the higher horsepowers, you have to go to remote mounted. Um, the benefits, the engine being aft, you have more cabin space. Uh, disadvantages of this type of arrangement is you got a lot of weight in the back of the boat. So, you know, your bow is going to come up. So, um, that's something the naval architect has to keep in consideration. How much you push this here? Uh, it, on the, on the, will you lose some efficiency with the, with the direction change? I, I, I don't want to quote any numbers. I'm not sure. I know that it's not, it's not excessive, but there, it's, you know, it's all these percentages add up. Whenever you change directions in engineering, you always lose, you always lose um, force power, but I don't think it's, I wouldn't say it's more than 5%. And this is an example of a, this is a V drive with a down angle gear, remote mounted. This shows the arrangement with the mounting system. There's the gear flange there, you can't see it. So the gear's taking all the thrust force of the propeller, and you typically have what's called a carton shaft or a U-joint shaft connecting the engine to the gearbox. This is a close coupled arrangement. Um, this is you know, really compact. It takes up a lot, a lot less space in an engine room. So I mean, your, your engine room bulkheads could be right here and here, I mean, tight, but allows for more cabin space. Disadvantage of this here, this type of range, it's tricky to align it um, because somebody's got to crawl under there in between the uh, stringers to try to see what the alignment of that flange is. And then you've got to compensate for the force of the thrust on these mounts. And uh, you got to make sure that these mounts are correct for that force. We've seen this kind of arrangement where um, the engine mounts weren't set up right, and when the, when the thrust force was pushing against the gearbox, the whole unit was rotating and causing it to go out of alignment. It was bending the shaft and wearing out the cutlass bearings and causing the gear to uh, fail. So we just something to keep in mind. Engine mounts, engine mounts, engine mounts. Torsional couplings, I mean, they're, they're giant, you know, they're, they're all overlooked a lot. And again, this, is, this, is, uh, this talks about the alignment of a carden shaft. And um, these U-joint shafts, um, when I was a kid, I was like, oh, U-joint shaft, who has to align those? You know, they, they don't need alignment. They're flexible. They're not. They're actually, actually very tricky to align. And they really, it's very important to align them because what happens is if these angles aren't equal, what it does is, they, when they're equal, they, they cancel each other out. There's an axial force going this way. Well, if the angles are different, what happens is you get an axial force, whatever the difference in the angle is. So you start seeing a, a hammering on the thrust bearings, and it'll chew up a reduction gear or a crankshaft in, in no time if the alignment's not right. And a U-joint shaft. This is not a CV joint shaft, this is a U-joint shaft. CV joint shafts are a lot more tolerant of misalignment, but they can't take high power 
And the disadvantage of a CV joint shaft is the, when you, when the, the balls inside the CV joint are riding in the same position all the time, you'll get brunelling of the bearing, and it'll chew up the, be it'll chew up the uh, bearing. We, we just working on a yacht now that they, they thought they'd be smart and get rid of the, the U-joint shaft and put a CV joint shaft on the, between the engine and the gear. Didn't work. They kept failing the CV joint shaft. It works good on this side. You can put a CV joint shaft here. It's called AquaDrive. I'm sure people have heard of it. Um, that's a good system, and it, it, it allows for, you know, uh, it's very tolerant for misalignment of the propeller shaft to the gear. But on the engine to gear, I'm not sure I'm sold on it. And this shows, you know, we, we use a laser system to align these shafts, and you can see there's the laser heads, and they're clamped on, and what we do is we measure the angle of each knuckle, and then when we align it, we make sure the angles are equal. All right, so well-maintained and properly set up operating room is a happy operating room, right? You want you so that's that's uh, that's all there is, folks. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have Do we have any questions for Rich in the audience? Right here up front. Can we get a microphone, Dinead? Thank you. Oh, okay. Shay's coming. You're going to be attacked from two angles here. Right behind. Oh thank, you. oh, thank you very much. Um, two questions, actually. When you were talking about the corrosion, those lines on the shaft for the boat sitting too yeah. long, that, that can happen also if the boat's on the hard and there's just moisture in there? No, no, no. It, it, if, it's, if it's, what is it's caused by um, lack of oxygen. If you, don't have, if you don't have water flow through there, you get crevice corrosion. If it's sitting in the hard, it's, 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 I, well. Wouldn't it be water? Okay, interesting, yes, you're right. A teak, like for example, a teak deck. If, if there's water between the teak and say you have an aluminum hull, it will have crevice corrosion, yes. On the shaft, I mean. The shaft, yeah. I, it's, it's hard to see where water would stay in there when you're in the in hard. The, in the uh, cutlass bearing, that's what I was talking, referring to. The On the hard? But the moisture is probably still in there. When the boat, when the boat gets hauled, it usually dries up. Yeah? Okay. Yeah, it usually dries up. All right, the other question. Uh, I never knew exactly how is the coupling of the transmission. So you showed the, uh, let's say, the, the, the flywheel of the engine, and mm -hmm. then you had the two rubber um, interfaces okay. with, with the transmission. What kind of transmission is it? Is it is like a, a hydromatic transmission? No, that it, you would put in neutral, and there's no mechanical connection, is there? There's a there's a clutch in the gear, or a clutch. Okay. So there's a clutch. There's clutch packs in the gear. They use they use hydraulic force, and what they do is the clutch packs compress from hydraulic force. Yeah. Okay. And, so it's like an automatic transmission in a car, which uh, is no, hydraulic. It's, a, it's actually a gearbox, isn't it? A, yeah. The gear it's, transmission, it's the but gear, it's actually a gearbox. So box. you can have like. So you can have the, the input pinion on the gear will always rotate in that arrangement. Right. But then what you can do is you can, the input pinion has clutch disc on it, which will engage the main bull gear. Or disengage. Or disengage, of course. You, know, you can, ahead or stern, you can control. But the engine and the pinion shaft are always turning. Right, right. So the transmission is would be similar to that of an automatic transmission of a car as opposed to a, one with a clutch and gear, sh gear drive? Mm. No, an automatic transmission of a car has several different gears. So, um, well, yeah, I mean, it would be a one gear to one transmission, speed. but the coupling is hydraulic. Well, There's I'll tell a hydraulic you, clutch, that's this, what you were saying. The clutch yeah. The automatic transmission comes engaging portion basis to the side Okay. I could send you information. I got right. like I got breakaway views. So if you want, I can I can send you. I would love that. Yeah. Here's, yeah, I mean, here's a great opportunity. We have the ex exhibition hall next door. We're about to take a break so that we can do one-on-one -on -one with our vendors. And these are the kinds of questions that need more in-depth explanation that can be a great opportunity for us. Anybody else have any other quick questions? Rich, thank you very, very much. Appreciate it, buddy. Thank, Thank you. you so much. That was excellent. You know, a lot of us don't realize 
many of us have been here in the business for quite a while, 2007 is 10 years ago, just before the economic downturn when boat building was robust and business was really brisk. We had a lot of product in the marketplace. Well, today we're selling that stuff and it needs these kinds of maintenance items that we don't even really think about.